Hello folks, this is Rifat Bari, Master's in Physics student at Brown University. My name is Sabuno Isaac Berry and I'm doing my Bachelor's in Math and Physics at NYU. Okay, so great. Today we're going to be continuing our discussion on general relativity. What do we know about GR so far? So what we've learned about general relativity is essentially uh, just some basic properties of special relativity. So we talked about the space-time interval last time and we're going to spend today talking about it as well. Okay, great. So let's jump right into it. So today we're going to go step by step through these table of contents so briefly. Let's just take a look. We're going to talk about how distance is invariant in Euclidean geometry, but how the space-time interval is invariant in space-time geometry. And then we'll use that to compare Newtonian and relativistic space-time uh, just briefly. And we'll talk about the light cone, some notation for the space-time interval, the proper time, and the twin paradox briefly. Okay, let's jump right into it. So the first step is we'll talk about how distance is invariant in regular geometry. So let's say you have a coordinate plane. So on the x-axis I have x, on the y-axis I have y. Well, yeah, it and doesn't really matter. Let's say I have two points, point A and point B, and I find the distance between these two points. Yeah. Now, can you rotate this coordinate plane? into yep. a different coordinate plane? Yeah, it would look something like, for example, this. But even with that, mm -hmm. the distance between these two doesn't change. On the original coordinate plane, mm -hmm. this is the delta x. And can you show delta y? OK, so delta y would be just like so. OK, mark delta y on the original coordinate plane. And they're going to be pretty much okay. the exact same once we Okay, and now do this to the new axis and what is that so delta this is a, mm -hmm. and, and is of course y this y does y depend on the angle that we rotate it to but generally okay draw it nicely okay yeah good so what does that tell us that tells us that the distance is the same how so delta x prime plus delta y how does that demonstrate distance is the same? It's the same regardless of how much you rotate your coordinate. How? Oh, this is not you. We can do the actual math. All what right. you have to do is you have to uh, get the rotation matrix. Cosine theta, mm -hmm. sine theta, uh, minus sine, sine theta, theta, cosine, cosine theta. theta, something like this. You have to take the rotation matrix, apply it to both of the points, get the transform points. In the new coordinate frame and then show that the distance is the same all right okay? got it this is in euclidean geometry the distance is the same yeah now, in space-time geometry what's the same can you tell the viewers well what's the same is the space-time interval that we examined before that's the space-time interval great so now let me try to give an analogy to help viewers understand the space-time interval more intuitively okay you want to see the analogy mm -hmm. let's say we have an airplane Okay, so I'm going to just draw the airplane uh, as a as a dot. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's say the airplane first moves up. Okay? Yep. Then I'm going to say it moves sideways. Mm -hmm. and then I'm going to say the airplane moves horizontally. Okay, so again, this is just an airplane. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Now let's say there are some people living on the ground. I'm going to call them the shadow people. Okay, the shadow people can only see the shadow of the airplane. So just the projection of the plane. Just the projection of the plane. So I'm going to label these points, points A and 3. So when the plane is moving from A to B, the shadow people see that the plane is just staying here. They just see the shadow is staying there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but when the plane starts moving from point B to point C, the shadow people start suddenly seeing, oh, the plane is moving. Mm -hmm. And then when the plane moves from C to D, the shadow people think, oh, the plane moved even faster. So the shadow people think that the plane is accelerating even though the plane is going at constant velocity. Right? Okay, mm -hmm. that's, that's the first thing. But the shadow people live in 1D. They don't know that the plane is existing in a higher dimension. Poor Flatlanders. And it's, and it's moving in that other dimension, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's say that the shadow people had access to another dimension, okay? We'll call this the Y dimension, okay? 
So now in this Y direction, let's say there are shadow people living in this Y land, okay? As the plane moves from A to B, these Y shadow people see it see, moving. See that the plane is moving, right? Yeah, then they see it moving at less speed. Then they see the plane is slowing down, even though the plane is still going at a constant velocity. And then as the plane moves from C to D, they think that the plane stopped. Yeah. So what does this tell you? Instead of calling this x and y, now let's replace this by With x and ct. x and ct. For this, we're going to represent the x as our position, the y as our time. Yeah. Moving horizontally means we're moving in space. Moving vertically means we're moving in time. So that means, you see, there's a competition. There's a competition between moving in space and moving in time. The more you move in space, the less you move in time. The more you move in time, the less you move in space. Right, so and this is just the, uh, the plane uh, stopping for a second, then moving a little bit and spontaneously teleporting. That's right. So here, in the time axis, it looks like the plane is decelerating. In the space axis, it looks like the plane is accelerating. accelerating. Even though in reality, when you combine both, the plane is going at constant velocity. In other words, there's a competition between the space and the temporal parts of the plane's movement, giving us a constant space-time interval when you combine them. Does that make sense? Yep. So really that cool. gives you more intuition for the space-time interval. Now I'm going to make a table for you to fill out. Are you ready? Simultaneity. And here I'll write relative velocity. What can you tell me? Can you fill in this table for me? Compare what? these two. What can you tell me about simultaneity in Newtonian space-time? Well, simultaneity definitely exists in Newtonian space-time. <laughs> while it's questionable in relativity, or this doesn't exist, you, you, two events can be objectively sim simultaneous. Can they be objectively simultaneous in Newtonian relativity? Yes. Okay, right. Okay. Well, relative velocity, we mm, uh, we can always figure out that uh, of the total velocity, uh, well, how can I say this? The, let's say the velocity with respect to the Earth equal to the velocity of the observer plus the velocity of the object. Okay. That's how you add velocities in Newtonian space-time. Mm -hmm. Can you have any rel relative velocity? between two particles in Newtonian space-time. Anything? Yeah. Yeah. What about in relative, uh, relativistic space-time? Well, in relativity, since uh, since speed can't exactly... Okay, so I have What's to... What's the speed limit? C, so... That's, That's all I want. Okay. Right? The relativistic addition of velocities is also, you add them, but now there's mm. a relativistic correction. But we yep. won't get into that. All that matters is there's a speed limit, right, between two particles relative velocities. Mm. So, in other words, in Newtonian picture, there's a universal clock. In the relativistic picture, there's a light cone that's defined at every event in space and time. Yep. Now, speaking of light cones, this is the present. Any events that are taking place here mm -hmm. are said from this point of view to have occurred in the future, while any points from this a reference frame that occurred in this uh, light cone, this part of the light cone, has been said to occur in the past. The space-time interval, remember? Can you write down what it's defined as? Yep, the space-time interval is just the magnitude of uh, the distance vector minus uh, c squared, t squared. Okay, def depends on how you define the metric, you can also... Define it in the opposite. Yes, but I believe the convention that Sean Carroll uses is the uses net minus one. plus plus plus. Time is only he uses the minus plus plus plus. Okay, can you explain what this is and how you can use it to reproduce this? All right, so this is what we call the metric. So uh, my relativity teacher used this notation mm -hmm. of Professor Verbarskot. The space time interval in matrix notation is written as the uh, oh, metric? it's it's like uh, this. Sorry. It's... X mu. Uh, X mu. <laughs> no. Well, let's see. You doubt it? Let's prove it. It's good that you're a skeptic. 
we need skeptics. So, remember that summation convention tells us that repeated indices are summed over. So we're going to sum over mu, we're going to sum over nu, and we're going to sum over all the passable... That's not the thing values. that really matters here. Okay, well, let's see. So now, check it out. The only time this matrix element will be non-zero is when we're mu and the nu are the same. Okay. Yep. So n... Uh, sorry, uh, eta. Okay, and if you remember what the first element is, it's ct. Second yep. element is x. Y. Third element is y. Fourth element is z. So what does that give us? n zero zero is minus one. So we have minus one. Uh, why don't I write it over here? Uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about Lorentz transformations.